Oftentimes, when tinkering around with one discovery or concept in a video game, you find yourself discovering parallel things that you weren't even considering. And today's video is really a culmination of those things. I was testing X when I discovered Y, and when I was checking out Y, I discovered Z. And Z absolutely blew my mind. This domino effect is sort of what rippled across Super Mario 3D Land as new things unfolded. So join me as I break down these super strange occurrence of how a single Goomba can delete a level in Super Mario 3D Land. So, not too long ago I found myself checking out a lot of different things within 3D Land. Those who have been watching may have seen my videos where I was testing the smashing power of Mario's behind against an army of Goombas, or perhaps my tinkering with the strange title screen level. A lot of times when these videos go out, people point out things I should try in the comments, so I find myself revisiting these stages over and over again. Like the suggestion to place a goal flag on the title screen level to see what would happen if Mario grabbed it. I tried and tried over and over to get this to work, but despite how I set up the object, or what parameters was given in the code, the game would clear out the flags immediately when the intro sequence loaded. Disappointing, but perhaps in the future I'll figure it out. So some things end in failure, unlike today's topic. So let's swing on back over to the very first stage in the game, because honestly, this is probably my most active testing grounds. So something I found very interesting while making my Super Mario 3D Land Goomba Stomp video was that while setting everything up, I noticed that certain enemies that normally would never interact had some special characteristics for interacting. You may remember that I had been creating massive stacks of Goombas to see how many total Goombas could be defeated with a single ground pound. But this experimentation and setup is what led me to another bizarre finding. So at the start of the very first level in the game, there are two cheap cheeps that swim through rivers and jump out of the water. It's actually pretty neat how the developers accomplished this because it's just a giant cycle. This is what it looks like underneath the level. It's like a never ending roller coaster. Anyways, while moving Goombas into place originally, I noticed that the cheap cheap who swims through the level was destroying my Goombas if they got too close. So this of course was really strange to me since most enemies just sort of go through each other and don't destroy other enemies. So this is the Y scenario I mentioned at the start of this video, with X being my Goomba stop experiment. Since I had witnessed time and time again that Cheap Chiefs were destroying Goombas, I wanted to see what other sort of enemies they could destroy. Perhaps in my head I was thinking how funny it would have been to have a Cheap Cheap defeat every single enemy in the game with ease, but things weren't that simple. So I started going through and lining up all sorts of different enemies to see how the Cheap Cheap would affect them. First up were Koopa Troopas, but for some reason the Cheap Sheep wasn't able to harm them. I found this odd because the fish was just obliterating the Goomba army. That's when I moved on to Boomerang Bros, but the same thing happened. The fish simply swam or jumped through the enemy without them being affected. Perplexed, I figured it was time to bring out the big guns. A single Goomba. Now here's the thing, a single Goomba and a Goomba from a Goomba Tower are not the same thing truly. Even when you have one Goomba left, it's still a different type of entity than a Goomba that will always spawn solo. And that's why the results of this test weren't so surprising. So a single Goomba, spawned independently who has never been inside a Goomba stack before, cannot be harmed by a Cheep Cheep. But the last Goomba of a Goomba stack still can be. One gets to feed with ease, and the other is left alone. So my dreams of crushing every single foe with a Cheep Cheep were kind of thrown out the window. I'm not sure why Cheap Cheeps have the ability to only hear Goomba Towers, but if there's a level I'm not remembering where this happens in, certainly let me know in the comments below. It's definitely really strange. Of course, there was one last part of this experiment that led to something super, super weird. And that was when I decided to test other Goomba types to see if the Cheap Cheap could defeat them. So in Super Mario 3D Land, there's a lot of different types of Goombas. There's single Goombas, towers of Goombas, and then Goombas that have tails. However, there's also giant tail Goombas. And that's the type of Goomba that really kind of messed things up. I was thinking, oh hey, I'll just spawn this little fellow near the river or something, and I'll have this cheap cheap send him to the Shadow Realm. Little did I know, I fell for this Goomba's trap card though. So when you place one of these types of Goombas, they typically tend to hop up and glide. I wasn't thinking much about this, because I figured they would just sort of hang around their spawn location. But I was wrong. So the Goomba would instantly leap up and glide a considerable distance off screen if I wasn't quick enough. But when it came to the Goomba performing its tail swipe, the game lost all hope. With the swipe of the Goomba's tail, not only did everything on screen take damage, but it warped Mario across the screen too. It was like a universal damage of one was granted to everything on screen, and the large tail Goomba somehow sacrificed itself in the process. The Cheap Cheap died, and the Koopa Troopers were put in their shells. Now, from what I could gather, this possibly occurred if the Goomba was off screen while swiping its tail. I don't know why, but it did. This caught me off guard, and I didn't know what had happened the first time. But I had no idea that things could get worse than this. So I decided to move 
move the Goomba to a different location and mark this off as a glitch. I still wanted the Cheep Cheep to hit the Big Big Goomba, so we moved it to the first river. But man, that was a mistake. Because this time, the Goomba did the same thing. Except when it launched its attack, it punched a hole in the universe. Anything within camera range was basically vaporized and converted into coins. The enemies, the level itself, and even Mario. Mario no longer existed. All that I was left with was the flowing waterfall. I couldn't move or jump, and I wasn't able to exit out the level either if I paused the game. It honestly looked like someone just selected all the objects on screen and hit the delete key. It's weird though, because I can't think of anything that would cause the game to mass unload everything on screen within its memory, especially since it cut off a part of the level. The level still continued on, and I could see the rest of it if I moved the camera, but this first section was just a ghost of its former self. Mario himself is an object loaded into the game's memory, so it explains why not even he was safe. So the only thing I could do was let the timer run its course so that the non-existent Mario could be defeated, and thus the level would start over. I haven't done enough research to figure out why this deletion occurs, but I've never had it happen before and it definitely caught me off guard. Perhaps it's a path behavior set to the Goomba that's causing the error. Or perhaps it's the environment itself, with the Goomba moving out of the camera range but still having to pull off its attack. Either way, it's strange that with one flick of a tail, everything on screen was mass deleted. By far, it's the most deadly attack I've ever experienced in a Mario game. And with that, thanks for joining me for this 3D Land Purge. If you like stuff like this, consider subscribing if you haven't yet. Thanks for watching guys and gals, and until my next video, cheers.